I feel like this is kind of a hard movie to talk about because it, it's obviously not done yet. It's a two-parter and it's way more explicit than I thought that it was a two-parter. Uh, I, I knew that it was a two-parter because people were talking about it. They were kind of bitching about it, if anything, that it was kind of making the movie, you know, feel less important because it, it's clearly just set up for later. And I mean, I felt bad or not bad, but I felt like, you know, that was kind of a problem until as soon as they show the title card, they show that it's a part one. It might not be in the title, but it is right there in the title card as soon as you, as soon as the movie starts. And it doesn't make it, you know, it doesn't make it better, but it's just like, at least, you know, it's not like a, a surprise at the end that it's a part one and not a full, a full fledged movie, you know? Unfortunately, because of that, it's kind of hard to talk about it because I feel because I feel like it's not done yet. I feel like I'm talking about half a movie. It doesn't like this doesn't feel like it should be two like three hour movies. Let's say let's say the second one is the same length as the first one. This shouldn't be like a like a, a five hour movie split in two. It should just be one long movie. But obviously you can't really do that. Right. But it, it does feel as a result a little slow at time and at times and maybe I don't know if that's a result of the fact that it's a two-parter and they kind of had to, to stretch it out because it would like if you did it in one go it would have been like too long right it might have been like a four-hour movie so instead they just made each part longer and then made them like two hour two hour movies like two two-hour movies i don't know but it the, the movie does tend to drag just a little bit sometimes i also feel like the emperor's motivation it, it's hard for me to talk about this without going to without going into spoilers because it, it's like very very spoiler heavy this whole subject but i just gotta talk about it the emperor's motivations i understand them but the arcanon's motivation i do not understand whatsoever and again i i don't know how to talk about this or to explain what i mean without diving into spoilers but it's just like when the main antagonist's motivations are not necessarily like they don't it's not like they're not clear it's that they don't make that much sense because it's not even the main character's fault like what happened i'm like trying i'm like tiptoeing around the spoilers it, it, like the, the what happened is not the main character's fault so why are they so bent on like you know i don't understand anyways <laughs> this is too hard to talk about without uh, diving into spoilers but something that is not too hard to talk about without diving into spoilers is the whole white savior thing which i also heard about before going to see the movie so obviously kind of had it in my head the whole time I didn't really see it while they were on a, while they were on a, the Atreides home planet. I forgot what it's called. Basically, the beginning of the movie, I didn't see it that much. I, I saw I saw it to a certain extent, like you know the chosen one, whatever. Okay, it, but it wasn't like a white savior thing. And then they got to a Karis, and I mean it's pretty fucking apparent. Like the, like Paul gets there, and it's literally like they're they're hailing him like he's the Messiah. Like again, not gonna go too deep into spoilers, but. It, it, the white savior analogy is is definitely relevant for this movie unfortunately and um i don't know how it's gonna evolve in the second one but there's definitely a strong setup for that white savior payoff which is kind of worrisome i feel like it doesn't make the movie bad it's just like i don't know Th then again you gotta think about it this is an older movie right like things like this they're kind of fucked up now but like you look back when like the first dune was released we didn't have this whole like you know like we didn't have this this idea of like oh you know th th there's a white savior it's like nobody, nobody cared well nobody cared it wasn't like that back then so maybe it's just a result of, of an adaptation of an older movie an older book maybe i'm not sure but all that to say i do think the white savior thing is a little noticeable but it's definitely not it doesn't hinder the movie to the point where it's unwatchable or it, it doesn't even really hinder the movie to the point where it's bad. It's just kind of a noticeable thing that didn't really need to be there all that much. But it's okay. It, it, the, the story is the story. I'm here to just fucking rate, rank the story based on just what it tells. And as long as it's not overtly offensive, then it, I don't think it's that big of a deal. For the As far as the acting goes, the actors all play their part really well. But I think the one who stands out the most is Rebecca Ferguson as Paul's mom every scene that she's in it looks like she's like she's really giving it her her, her 110 bro. like she's going crazy because a lot of the acting in this movie is a, is a little muted I, I feel like when she's on screen she's like she's like fucking shivering she's shaking she's super scared and it's like it, like sometimes her acting is so 
better than everybody else that it, it like takes me out i'm like holy fuck like <laughs> like everybody else is so fucking muted compared to her so props to her for sure uh the cinematography is impressive that's i i don't even know where to begin there's so many like you could take so many screenshots of this movie and put them as your wallpaper like that's how good some of this cinematography is like they these shots are great they give a great sense of scale with like the huge ships the huge explosions like just space the planets like it, it looks super super cool that's i have nothing to say about that i have nothing but positive things to say about about the cinematography it's just great and i also don't talk about this often but the costume designers they did their thing on this fucking movie bro i haven't seen the old one just for reference maybe i should have said that earlier i haven't seen the old dune so i don't know what it looked like maybe this is a one-for-one -one recreation i doubt it but maybe this is a one-for-one -one recreation but like the costume designers went crazy like all the armor looks really cool all the, like the the ceremonial clothes they look really like regal like some of the like i forgot the order there the order of like the i wouldn't say sisters but you know what i mean if you've seen the movie they look creepy as fuck with like the chain on their face and shit like the costume designers went crazy and i don't i don't even i don't even notice this shit usually but i noticed it in this movie they did their shit i can't even lie it's hard for me to give this movie a grade but i will give it a b plus even as an in, even as an incomplete movie i liked it a lot and it's it's like i would rate it higher but the main problem is that like i, I can't rate half a movie higher than like a b plus Th this is a very good beginning to a movie this is a very good first half of the movie because th this isn't a movie this is half a movie so you should go into it just knowing that you're not going to get all the answers to all the questions that you're that you're looking for you will have to wait for how i don't even know how many years to watch the second one and get the completion to the story this is not a standalone movie so just know that 